Welcome back from FS Derek and uh, those of you who have watched my last couple of videos will know that I've just bought the uh, Faversham to St Pancras route for train simulator and I thought because I've said it is a route I travel um, to be quite a bit of fun just to compare um, the simulator to real life so I'm going to um, just to uh, show you a few pictures and a bit of video I've taken just uh, is just a bit of fun um, I'm going to start off with a picture of Ebbsfleet Station, which is, um, sorry, uh, not Ebbsfleet, Stratford, which I said is a bit of a monstrosity. And uh, this is a picture of the actual station. I'm just going to fade to a picture of the from the simulator. And as you can see, they've not done a bad job. If you look at the um, shelter on the left-hand side, um, that's not quite right. The, um, there's some sort of um, arch bridge in the background which isn't there in real life, and the uh, the escalator on the right hand side is not in the right position either but having said that until I actually literally compare these two photos I didn't know so let's go back to the actual photo um, and then that's the actual photo and then we'll go back to the simulator now uh, I'm going to do a bit more of that in a minute but first of all I said that I'm going to show you the best bit on the HS1 route in my opinion and that's the Ashford Yards where the um, the trains are um, stored and repaired and it's just outside Ashford so this is a bit of video of us coming into it um, from Canterbury um, into Ashford station it's not actually modelled on the route um, because uh, the, the journey that I do doesn't actually join the the Faversham route until um, after the Midway Towns um, but um, I thought um, you'd like to see it because I said it is it's um, it's always fun to try and guess how the trains get into this yard because uh, there's very uh, there's only like one track and then and then it spreads out into a load of tracks. Uh, always as I come into the yard, I always try and work out if I was trying to get into the yard which line I'd want to be on and never get it right. Anyway, let's get on to the next bit. We're going to take a quick look at the overhead uh, panels. This is the one in the train, obviously, and let's go to the one in the sim. And that's not too bad. It doesn't work, but uh, you know, interior pretty pretty spot on. This is an approach to Ebb's Fleet. Um, unfortunately, it's not the approach to Ebb's Fleet that I recorded in my video which I'll show you in a second because um, this is the point at which the two lines merge so uh, let's just cruise along for a bit I'll show you here I am coming up the um, Faversham branch in the class 395 and this is Ebbsfleet station here and it's split into two parts um, this is the things keep telling me I need to stop so I will um, just carry on slowing down a bit. Um, so yeah, so this is the bit that uh, we're going to come come in on, and you can see that we're cleared here because it's blue. Um, the actual um, video I'm going to show you is is coming in here from the south, which is the um, Ashford branch, which is not modelled on this yet, well, which is a shame. But then no, you know, I suppose everybody wants to have their own personal bit of um, railway model, don't they? Um, preferably their favourite seat. So, let's see if we can see Ebb's Fleet. Here we are. This is the um, this is the shortcut. So here we are cutting through and uh, just coming into the station now. Now, as I say, the actual um, bit of the station that I come into is uh, down there, so perhaps we'll have a look at that in a second. In order to do that, <coughs> we're going to have to stop, aren't we? So. Yes, well, my apologies to um, passengers in first class. Anyway, it's given us a, a good uh, view of the station, hasn't it? If I, in fact, if I leave the train to stop, we can we can go and have a look. And uh, this is the um, they modelled this this part of the route actually. So I wonder if they go back as far as the flyover bridge. Uh, probably not. I'm pressing um, shift up arrow to get this. Yeah, no. I think the scenery is obviously a bit sparse, isn't it here? So, um, but this is the uh, this is my approach. 
So let me um, play it and then um, you can see what you think. There we are. That's a good place to leave it. And let's go to the actual train. So we're back in the train on the overhead, um, the viaduct, as uh, I said that the actual train, train, the real train that we have on is down there actually, so we're about to merge and go down here, but this is the bit that um, you need to swap the electricity over, so you have to go from DC to control, and uh, you'll see these lights switch over as well. Uh, I think you do, uh, I just need to put the pantograph up, there we are, and then, so we've got the red, red and the white here. So that means that we're, um, and also you can hear this. You can hear the. Air, I think it's the air conditioning that comes on or something. Anyway, so we know we're okay to carry on on the overhead now. So let's have a quick look. There we are. So there's the station, and this is this is the uh, where we're coming down. In fact, I waited on this platform for about two hours once for a train to Canterbury, not realising that they were all coming and going underneath me and, and none of the trains to Faversham were stopping at um, Ebbsfleet that day. So, um, and, and the cleaners came and checked the platform for rubbish twice in those two hours and not one of them thought to tell me, um, you know, are you on the right platform, mate, or anything. <laughs> I'd got the I'd got the wrong train. I'd got the train to Faversham and decided to change at Ebbsfleet, and it completely um, forgot that uh, uh, there might might be two platforms. So here we are. So um, we've we're just about merged now. So that thing we've come down. If I go to the world view, is is uh, this um, viaduct here? And then and then now let's go back to the train and then um, see what you think about the. Um, the realism of that. So, in the actual recorded uh, footage of the train, we're going to be we're going to be pulling out and going down here. Right. So, here we go. There's the viaduct on the right. We won't be able to um, see any of this because obviously we'll, we're uh, we're on the viaduct. But uh, when they merge, we Ebbsfleet, as I've said in the previous video, is just south of the Thames. So this, this is going to be a short clip because what we're going to do is pretty much dive straight under the Thames. So I think there's a bit, there's a lot more detail on here, but I mean you can't really fault it, can you? Too much. I don't know. I didn't. I don't remember that bridge. And I'll just go back. This is all uh, cut out of chalk because um, they've excavated a lot of chalk here. And in fact, on the other side behind us is a massive great shopping centre which was built in the, um, the space where the chalk was taken out. Now, there are the walls of the tunnel, uh, and we're just about to dive in, so we'll have a look. We'll go back to the train in a minute, have a look at the walls, have a look at the scenery, and have a look at the shape of the tunnel. I've reset the simulator to go um, out of Ebbsfleet again, because I'm, I was just interested to um, have a look at that. So let's jump into world view and have a look. Yeah, well, you know, that's not bad, is it? Those pillars are all pretty good. And there's a bridge. So, um, and also the uh, all the overhead wiring and everything is is very realistic. So I'm pretty. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to give them an, an 8 out of 10 for that. Let's have a quick look at the chalk. 
Yeah, pretty good. Chalk pretty good. I would say. And tunnel. Yeah. Texture is not, not quite right, is it? But uh, the actual tunnel. Let's have a look from the passenger's point of view. This is where I was filming it from, obviously. Yeah, well. I suppose a tunnel is a tunnel is a tunnel, isn't it? Although, um, as I said before, you can't really see this much inside the tunnel, so still good. I'm going to uh, skip forward now to um, coming to Stratford, and we've just come out of the tunnel because um, Stratford's pretty much a station that's exposed to the sky. That's that's in a, a tunnel. It's a, it's a station in a tunnel with nothing on the top. So um, we're pulling in. It's it's a, an industrial monstrosity <laughs> station as you can see it really is uh, the best place to go to survive a nuclear attack uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this now we'll just do this bit and then we'll, we'll see if we've got a bit of footage pulling into um, King's Cross uh, let's see if I can uh, pull up opposite that uh, station sign Right, we're just coming out of the tunnel now. So, shift over to the side view and have a quick look. It's pretty good, isn't it? Pretty monstrously concrete. These stations are very long, and then there are far more platforms than than are ever used. Um, it's really sort of been built with um, an eye on expansion for the next uh, 500 years, I think. Now, what was that sign? Plenty there. Well, I've just gone past it. I think I might have done. Unless there's another one. Ah. That was it. This is another one. <laughs> well, we can go and have a look. Let's shift to real world view. Yeah, I think that was it there, wasn't it? Oh, that wasn't too bad, was it? Now, did you spot the difference <laughs> between that one and the real life one? It's the uh, the way out is not down that way. That is the way to London through the tunnel. The actual um, the actual way out is is there. What well, is that? Way. So there's another sign here. Let's see if that's yeah. They've all got they're, they're all they're all pointing the same way, aren't they? Let's just go past the actual way out and see. Yeah, because what they've it's been a little bit lazy there, haven't they? They've sort of that is pointing the correct way, and then of course, um, let's just try not to get too much vertigo. But um, that's the actual way out, and then all the signs this this way are on. Also, I don't think that car stop six car stop sign is there. I'd be quite surprised if it was. We're not going to Foston Central, are they? Ah. Let's just shut this lot up. Right, we're going to turn the um, the reading light off, which I found, which actually does illuminate the cabin, the the, uh, the tunnel. So, in fact, let's just leave that on for a second, and. Uh, get going 
And I'm going to call it a day there, which is a shame, because I'm enjoying this. I mean, I could, I've got some more footage, but it's actually I shot it on the way out of um, King's Cross coming back. So um, I'd have to um, set up another load, load and load more video in from the day, the next day, and then reverse the journey, etc., etc. So if you, if you enjoy this sort of thing, then let me know, and I can always do... Um, I've got a, a mind to do a reverse journey anyway because I've lived in the area for a long time. It would be quite funny just to drive past the various places where I've lived. And uh, oh, I've got no lights on. There we are. So it's telling me to go 100. So you just basically you just do what this says. In fact, you can... Um, if you press F4, you can do away with the uh, control panel altogether. Sure, people do. Can, there we are. Use the power, the thrust, the thruster. This is the uh, tunnel between Stratford and Kings Cross, and it's not very long. So, um, um, but um, there's one other thing that I meant to mention, and that is that um, going through the tunnel under the Thames. Uh, just a, a, a snippet of information for you, if you're a train enthusiast. When the line was originally built. Um, there was a problem with the stability of the train through that tunnel and uh, the, the, the under the Thames bit, not not the uh, diving down Stratford or the Stratford to King's Cross bit. And the train used to waggle from side to side. It used to yaw, to use the um, technical term, and um, or shimmy. And uh, it was a big problem for the first year or so. This was before the Olympics. And in fact, uh, many, many an occasion... Uh, the train would be going at a certain speed, whatever speed it was, 150 kilometres or something, and then and then all of a sudden it would start swaying madly from side to side, looking like um, you know it was quite alarming. Um, it, it, it was some sort of um, uh, resonance in terms of the the frequency of the um, uh, the um, suspension, and um, the guard used to have to ring ring the driver up. And he would say, uh, "Look, you know, you're, you're okay <laughs> in the, in the, in, at the front there. But uh, down at the back here, this thing's shaking its tail about, uh, fit to come off the rails." And the driver used to change the speed, um, either uh, slow down, usually slow down, but um, uh, sometimes used to speed up because it was only at certain speeds that it happened. And it was only in certain trains that it happened because I think they retrofitted them with some sort of... they, they uh, adjusted the shocks or the dampers or something and um, eventually most of the trains didn't do it and until there were only just a few of them still did it and then, and then there were none of them that did it. So. Yeah, so let's, um, let's stick with this. You'll see what I'm doing. I'm just following these, these things here. So you just... Um, you don't need to break more than... Um, 70% um, and it guides you in pretty nicely you know. Tell me to go down to 60 now I was looking at the uh, I've got some footage of the King's as I say of King's Cross and it's um, that is, again it's pretty realistic all that ballast on the right and the building yards on the left and everything is, is all pretty good so, um, don't forget to like and comment, you know, what they say, you know, blah, blah, blah. Not that it'll help me. I don't make any money. So, honestly, it doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to get 9,000 people watching my videos. So, uh, nine would be good. <laughs> Still, uh, that's what the, you know, you have to do it because you love it, don't you? Not because you want to make a fortune. You can make a you can make a small fortune on YouTube. You just have to start off with a big one, right? And there we are into King's Cross. So we've done this before, so I won't bore you with it all again. But uh, if um, if you're um, you've been watching this uh, because you can't get to sleep, then uh, hopefully you're going to miss this. So, um, anyways, FS Derek signing off, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>